Slumber Party Gone Wrong My friend was having a slumber party for her birthday and she invited me. It was me, Anna, Jody, and Alice. We were mucking around, telling scary stories, making some up and real ones that we experienced. Just as a time when Jody told hers, there was a big bang at the door. We were all scared because Alice's mom and dad had gone out that night, so we were home alone. So, we decided to lock all the doors and windows and then met back at the room we slept in. Jody did not come back, but when we got back, the window in that room was open. We assumed Jody went out there to try and scare us, but thinking back, Jody is the most scared of us all. We were scared. We checked out the window and no one was out there, so we locked it. We checked the whole house downstairs, then checked up, and we heard screeching. We went inside the room that we thought it was coming from, and there, there was Jody trying to shut a window that screeched when it grinded along the bottom. Just as we all tried to shut it, it just shut. Like that. No screeching. It was as if someone or something was holding it shut. Then, the bang at the door again, five times. We decided to check it out. As we went downstairs, they all voted for me to open it. So, I did. Nothing. Then, as I shut it, something held it and something said, Let me free. We didn't understand it. What does this mean? We decided to let it go. Besides, we were kids. What were we going to do? No one would believe us. And from that night on, we dreamt about it. But when we tried to talk about it, we, we just couldn't. It, it was strange. Thank you for hearing my story. I just... I just had to let it out. Slumber Party Scares This story took place when I was about 14 years old. I'm 22 now, and the memory still scares the crap out of me. My friend had a huge slumber party for her birthday. Her house was very old and was rumored to be once part of the Underground Railroad. Her attic was a series of rooms that mirrored here downstairs, except for one that had a hole cut out of the floor. It looked like a tunnel led from it and went about three feet back before it was blocked off with rubble and bricks. She would always tell us stories of weird stuff that happened inside her house. Her room had the stairs to the attic attached to it, and she would hear sounds coming from up there like people walking around and stuff like that. And once. Her electric keyboard was up there, and it went off on its own. It was playing Oh Susanna on repeat, which is kind of strange, because her name is Susan. We, being a bunch of teenage girls, decided to play that silly game, light as a feather, stiff as a board. We were all sitting around in a circle, with candles on our sides, concentrating on getting this girl to float, when the stuff hit the fan so to speak. All at once, the room we were in dropped in temperature, and the candles all flecked at once. Like there was a breeze in the room, which there, there wasn't. We all screamed and jumped up. We all piled onto our couch. There was at least ten of us, so you can't imagine. That's when we heard a loud boom come from the coat closet, or the entryway connected to the room we were sitting in. Almost at the same second, a dark shadow ran around the wraparound porch. We watched it move through the windows, and at one point, it passed right by where we were all sitting. We did not hear the sounds of anyone running through, which... which was odd. It stopped at the front door, and that's when we realized that the door wasn't even locked. Not that it would have really mattered anyways. But still, I decided to be the brave one out of the ones on top of the pile of girls, and jumped up and ran and locked the door. When I did this... I could clearly see out the window, and no one was there, human at least. I flicked on the lights on the way back to the couch, and slowly, we got our nerves back. Eventually, we opened the door the coat room entryway was, and saw that her coat rack had been knocked over by something. None of us slept that night, and needless to say, I never spent the night at her house again.
Demonic Slumber Party The story takes place right outside of Millington, Tennessee. At the time, I was 12 years old, and this was my very first encounter. My best friend was going to have a slumber party to celebrate her 12th birthday. She invited me and two other girls, and I was the eldest by a few months. We arrived in the same car, and the party started at about 7 o'clock p.m. We started eating cake and attempting to play Clue. Then, we attempted to play Twister, and her mother went to bed. Her older brother was spending the night at his friend's house about 20 miles away. Her mother told us to go to my friend's room, well, so we did. One of her other friends told us a ghost story, and then my friend did something I, I regret to this day. She told us about her imaginary friend, and I knew that she was only trying to scare the other girls. She said that her friend showed up at midnight and left at 1 o'clock a.m. Then, at midnight, it came. It started with me telling them I could tell when bad things were going to happen, and that I had seen a warning. They all got scared, but we were thirsty, so we went to the kitchen to get some drinks. Well, when I got halfway down the hall, I remember that I forgot something in the room and went back to get it. When I came down the hallway, I felt like I was being choked. I was literally unable to breathe. The two other girls were looking at me and saw my face turning blue. My friend was looking down the hallway. When I saw the look on her face, I turned around, still gasping for air and crying. I still remember the creature to this day. It was inside her brother's room, staring at me. With red eyes, it was like a shadow. But it was tall and had large bat wings. I turned away, and I started being able to breathe again. But when I looked at the room again, the creature was gone. We all ran back to the room, shut, locked, and put a chair under the door. 30 minutes later, we heard someone walking down the hall and we called out my friend's mother's name. <laughs> no one answered. So we called out again, still, still no answer. Then, the doorknob jiggled. We all huddled together on my friend's bed. We never heard the footsteps leave. Sure enough, at 1 o'clock a.m., the presence was completely gone. Just to be sure, we didn't sleep at all. Slumber Party Nightmare So me and my friends never did want to see whatever happened on that night at my friend's slumber party All alone in an apartment We set up the beds for the living room and made sure that the door was locked All the time I felt as if I was being watched My new friend Amy looked up at me and said Are you alright? And I nodded and got my pillow and blanket out of my bag as the other girls did the same. Soon, as we finally set up the sleeping sides, Amy, Christina, Amy, yeah, we had the same names, slept on the bed closest to the hallway and the kitchen. Latesha and Carla slept on the bed near the TV and the window. Carla said she might not be able to sleep over when we were eating junk Christina's mom brought for the party. Soon, after we finished half the stuff, we got dressed on our PJs, and my friend said they were gonna get Letitia stuff and go ask if Carla can sleep over. Carla lived just in the next apartment, and we dropped her off since she wasn't alone. Letitia lived far away. We were terrified, and Amy whispered to us that she felt something following us. I said the same to her, and we both hugged each other, while the other girls were strangely quiet. Amy freaked when she said something was surely following us, and she said she wanted to go back and then she muttered, it's coming, and then a stupid car drive past us very fast, splashing me with a bit of water and Amy too. We all screamed and ran halfway towards Letitia's house. Amy looked more frightened, and I put an arm around her telling her that ghosts can't hurt us. She, she never replied. 
as she continued to walk towards Leticia's house. A banshee scream echoed through the place. We all stopped and slowly turned around and saw a shadow run in the forest. This time, we all quickly walked, not speaking and hardly breathing at all. Soon, as she got Leticia's stuff, me nearly getting attacked by a small cat at the time, we walked back to Christina's apartment, still being followed. We soon forgot about the thing, and Carla was waiting outside the apartment with her bag and everything else. An hour later, at 11.30, we all ate some more pizza and cake and watched the music channel. We were all soon dancing with the flashy thingy going on, and suddenly in the middle of Amy's dance, it went out, and we all started screaming. Everyone fell on the bed as a shadow entered the kitchen. Christina, being the smart one, tried to get the flashy thingy going, the light switch was in the hallway, and no one anywhere was going in there. The shadow itself soon disappeared, and the flashy thingy died on us many times. Someone was nearly in tears as they were all under my blanket with me hugging my pillow. Soon, Leticia jumped up and ran in the hallway and turned on the light. And then, a few minutes before 12, we all got a slice of cake and put a candle on. I said, we should blow the candle at 12. Soon, as we did, I saw the shadow again. But I never told. At one, nothing happened as we got ready for bed. I was the last one to sleep, and I watched that shadow wander around in the kitchen. I soon fell asleep, with a calm feeling. Preston Castle Slumber Party Two months ago, we made arrangements to join the slumber party at Preston Castle, a closed prison for boys from the late 1800s in a state of severe disrepair. Finally, the full moon weekend came and we were there. Fourteen of us, mostly strangers, set up our beds in the first two rooms and migrated back to the front steps to sit and chat. Snacks and drinks would be served in the basement, which had lights and electricity. Surprise, surprise. The lights aren't working at all. It's a perfect full moon with mackerel clouds that dripped over the brilliant ivory sphere in the darkening sky. At twilight, the bats start flying out of the towers. Absolutely classic. Next, the white owls appear, glistening in the moonlight, effortlessly gliding in and out of windows and over our heads, soaring like timeless sentries. Talk about icing on the cake. The large, ominous castle stands before us, its silent window steadily observing the gatherings of intruders who would soon scamper throughout its limbs, arteries, and heart. The scene is set, and it's enough to set your pulse leaping. A few of us head to the big room in the second floor annex, two stories high with a large timbered ceiling. I call it the dark room. My attempt at Julie's wand resulted in nothing but confusion, and these went a bit insane in her hands as well. David experienced his first hair raising near the steps to the third floor. Repeatedly, his arm hair would rise on solid goosebumps. Julie and Ruth had been in the nurse's station in the infirmary when they got odd responses in one spot, then sharp and clear answers in another. David and I spent a great deal of time in front, taking in the presence of the castle. David, at that moment, is quietly absorbing all of this, I think, a bit amazed and trying with all his heart to be open and yet hang on onto his logical, skeptical sensibilities at the same time. Hours later, I was sitting in a chair in the infirmary with my back to a wall, and... and I brought out the wands. To make a long story short, the wands crossed at several questions and went bonkers at others. I would have to conclude we were being played with, receiving only a few concrete answers. I, I ended the session abruptly when someone touched the back of my neck. I do not like being touched. 
The two people facing me could only see the wall, absolutely no one else. I listened to the EVP the next day and it was weird. I mean, at the beginning, I sounded actually drunk. <laughs> My words were extremely slow and slurred, just really odd. Although the worst event that happened was inside the library. David and I head back up to the second floor. I had to need to go see that room again as, as well as a peek into the destroyed third and fourth floors through the ceilings. That seemed to be important, yet it was forgotten once we got there. Eventually, David entered the room and stood near the front windows. I stood about halfway into the room. Bats would respond to our presence by flying around and flying past us, tiny little guys. At first, I thought they were giant moths at first. Silly me. I was expecting 12-inch wingspans, I guess. I heard, at that moment, as clear as can be, a sound I could not quite identify. Turning around back towards the door, I fully expected to see one of the hunters walk down the hallway from the right and past the library door. The sound, however, continued directly in front of the doorway, yet no one was there. Whirling dervish? That's when I lost it. At that moment, I walked quickly over to David and took his arm. David's arm hair was up, goosebumps again. We left. Period. I would not go into that hallway until I had peeked with a torch in both directions. I was struggling to describe the sound, a rapid rocking chair noise. Walking with heavy sneakers, purposely full toe to heel. We booked it down the main staircase and back onto the porch, where we counted 12 people. Phew. Incredible. Wow. Man. Shiver. What a night. Thanks for reading.